Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back. If you don't know already, I have a cat. Her name is Luna and she's the star of my new Twitch streams, which is what I've come to talk to you about today. Yesterday I did a stream for about four hours. We analyzed the animation of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It was a lot of fun. Obviously we didn't even make a dent in the overall amount of animation in the game, but I wanted to share with you some key moments from that stream and I wanted to just kind of show you a new thing that we're doing. Oh, hi. She's so photogenic. Yes, you are. So what Luna and I have come to tell you is that I am now streaming on Twitch three days a week, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. The schedule's on Twitch, but yeah, that's the schedule. It's a mix of different stuff. Game animation analysis, I'll be animating stuff in Maya, like you guys have always been asking for. Now I'm gonna be doing it over on Twitch. But anyways, let's talk about Breath of the Wild. If you haven't already played it, Zelda Breath of the Wild is one of the best games ever. It's one of my favorites. It's so, so good. And even though the game came out a couple of years ago, I wanted to talk about the animation behind it. So if you want to learn a ton of stuff live and you know, witness all kinds of crazy stuff, I have a reference cam set up where I can analyze reference. We can go frame by frame. But we had a lot of topics this weekend, and so I just wanted to share with you that that is a new thing that I'm doing that you can follow me over on Twitch and make sure to turn on notifications so you know when I go live. Last time on Dragon Ball Z. So check this out. Look at this pose that he's in. The next frame, he's in a completely different pose. That's because that's the moment I hit the button to backflip. This is frame one. One, two, let's call it 16 frames to landing. Technically, we still have the settle, but it's 16 frames of flip. We hit the ground on frame 16, but that doesn't mean it's over. The flip is 30 frames long. Turns out, right at the halfway point is the landing. That ratio is 50-50. It takes 50% of the time to do the flip, and the other 50% of the time to compensate for that weight and him go whoosh, and then stand back up. If you take that last 15 frame, 14, 15 frames and just you know cheapen it, then it's gonna flip and he's gonna go doo -doo, and like land on the ground and it's gonna be like he weighs nothing. You know, and the NES classic Mario, whoop, 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 he's just jumping around. He's totally weightless. Oh man, that was dumb. I don't know why. And down we go. I'm legitimately embarrassed by that. I'll save you. <laughs> where he starts to like pull back. One, two, three. It's three frames to get from shield position to completely off balance. He's like flung backwards. He's got his sword out in front of him. He's completely lost balance, but this is his defense and he knows how to use it. So he's gonna put it ahead of him, but at least he's gonna have the sword there as a defense. <laughs> his shield explodes, he puts his sword in front of him. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes, and actually that's a really good observation. Opposing actions are definitely a thing. You have a character holding a thing and you're gonna have them like give it forward to somebody. You don't just have them go mechanically. You want to involve the body a little bit more. I was going to give this laptop to somebody in a really weird way and I was just going to go, here you go. Watch my posture. I'm not doing this on purpose. This is what naturally happens, right? See how I lean backwards? If I don't, if I purposely, I start to slowly fall and I'm actually using my core muscles to like not fall over. To do this, we naturally go the other way. This is opposing action. This is actually super weird. His feet are on the ground. Go to the next frame. He's now in that squat position, but his feet rise off the ground. He's now standing on an invisible platform, and then he does his whole thing. My guess of why this is happening is it's intentional. So why would you have a character standing, hit a button, and flip them, they go down to squat, and then immediately in one frame back up into the air? My guess is that causes a one frame jitter hitch that is really distracting because he'd go from standing in one frame to lower, and then back up much higher, so you'd have this weird ch -ch thing that would happen. So my guess is to combat that, if he's not already in a combat low stance, bring the feet up so he's squatted properly, but keep his head in the same spot, even raise it slightly, look at that difference in height here to here, it's slightly taller. It starts that easing up motion to have him move up in a positive direction. That is my guess of why that happened, but when he lands, there's no reason to have him land in a weird place, so just put him back on the ground. That would be my guess of why that was solved that way, and I think it's actually a brilliant solution because you never notice that his feet leave the ground. When someone work, submits a demo reel to work in a place like Blizzard or on a project with people swinging swords and axes and you know big like Warhammer, you can tell by looking at the animation whether or not their video reference had a heavy object or not. So if we look at this reference, this is the opposing actions we had talked about. Notice how this leg goes out really wide. So when you need to swing something, or throw something, or whatever, you usually end up going to your hips because that's where all your weight is. You can throw your weight and then torque your chest and get a lot more power in your swing. But there is all this turning and spinning because you're trying to cause torque and um, different forces. You whip your hips, then your chest, and your shoulders, and the arm just flicks it on. The arm is just aiming at that point. You're not actually throwing it from your arm power throwing it from the power of your body. Funny how these Twitch streams have turned into an entire like animation class. 
Anyone got any ideas? What kind of a cool like animation should we check out? Link will land in different ways sometimes. Like if he lands from up high, he'll like, uh, like he'll hit the ground and really like, uh, and he has to like recover and stand up. Here I'm falling, I hit my parachute, he stops his descent right above the ground, then I put the parachute away, he hits the ground, compresses a little bit, and then keeps running. Because he his momentum was already stopped. So there's a really nice transfer of energy happening in all of this. Link's pose goes from his combat stance into the deflection anticipation. So this is our anticipation. Frame one, two, the shield goes out in front of him. Three, he starts to swing it, and it's still in front of him though. It's just swinging, but it's in front of him. Frame four is the moment that the deflection actually occurs. It's when he starts to change the direction of the blast. We still have the blue lighting, we still have the orange lighting, and then you get all these little tiny debris chunks of the floor. We have the big debris chunks of what we would imagine to be part of the Guardian explosion. That's basically like breaking down the explosion of a Guardian attack, deflection, and an ancient arrow, and all that kind of stuff. And like why this all feels so powerful, and some of the things they used to achieve it. So you go right to the frame. There's like, literally, that's the first frame. One, two, three, four. I'd say four frames, he is now in the optimum pose. Like he could turn around and run the other way if he wanted to. He's ready to go. He could he could like start moving that way, but no. One, two, three, four. Another four frames, and look at this, like he's turned. One, two, look at his, his butt sagging, his head's still looking up. Three, his head's looking down. Four, body starts moving forward, his head overlaps and looks down. Now he starts to get back up, and he's looking down with the effort as he picks his shoulders up, as he pulls his arms up, as he pushes off with this leg and he keeps his balance with this one. One, two, three, four. And then we can move back into our regular cycle. By the way, let's analyze this really quick. This is frame one. Frame two, he's got his hand on his sword. There's no time to see him like reach up and grab it. You hit the button, the next frame, he's got his hand on the sword. One, two, three, four, five. Five frames to have it above his head. And then frame 10, it's like settled and ready to go. We get this great like anticipation pose. Like this foot sticks out because then that foot has to come around here. The driving force as the hips turn and the hips turning pulls the rest of the body which pulls the shoulders, which pulls the sword, his head's looking ahead and all that weight, the sword is dragging up over his shoulder. It's not bending, I drew it like it's bending, but it's not bending. Turns and notice his feet are sliding. Like his, he's, he's spinning on the ground. And really it looks like it's just one pose rotating like these three frames but it's so quick we don't really notice or care the arm starts to break away from the body his head is still looking ahead he sweeps underneath and then the body stops rotating and we go from here to whoosh it starts going look how condensed he is his body is like his he's all hunched over and by the end of it whoosh, this is a terrible angle but look at that line of action he is now in this like heroic stance and then he steps back into his battle pose I like this little waddle he does too. His stance is very wide, and if I go faster, he's just like wah, 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 wah. But he's got this super wide stance for stability, because he, I mean, this is a character choice, again. If the ground shakes, if something bumps him, if the wind comes, he's got a wide base, he's ready to go. Versus if you just stand and do a bow and arrow thing, you know, you're gonna be like moving around with the wind like a tall tree. I hope that was useful, that you learned something, and that you don't mind a shorter video today because I just wanted to share with you some of the new exciting stuff we're doing over on Twitch in addition to YouTube. So head over to Twitch for more great stuff like that, and if you haven't already, don't forget to hit subscribe and ring that bell so you know when I post a new video. Thanks for watching, and Luna and I will see you in the next video.